Since we're working with electrocyclic reactions in this video, a topic that usually makes students' heads spin a little bit, I'm going to do a little more explaining than I usually do, but we'll try to keep it quick and simple. The idea here is we want to figure out how this conjugated pi system is going to be used to close the ring over here through an electrocyclic reaction. The process or the mechanism is the same as the Diels-Alder reaction, except in this case we aren't adding molecules together, we're performing a cyclization. So I can go ahead and draw the mechanistic steps up here, and we're getting, seeing that same merry-go-round of electrons. But that means we need to figure out the stereochemical outcome, and I could go ahead over here and draw everything except what we need with, for the stereochemistry. So the stereochemistry is going to arrive here and here, but how do we determine that? If we consider the molecular orbitals real quick, and these lines essentially represent these one, two, three double bonds that we see. We're wanting to get an overlap between the two ends of the diene, excuse me, the triene in this case. That means we want to look at the orbitals that are located on the ends. And I'll draw them again up here, just as they were below. Now, in order for the bond to form, these need to overlap with the respective heads and tails. So we might consider this one, since I filled in the top part of the orbital as heads, and the same thing over here, if we consider a coin. So if we want to overlap these two areas, this one will need to spin this way, and the one on the right will need to spin this way if we're going to overlap these two groups, which would then you know, form the bond. The orbitals spin towards each other, which makes this dis rotary. And I'll just put dis for here for now. Now we can apply that to what our reactant looked like, or our starting material looked like, to see what are the stereochemical outcome for our product. Well, if they had to turn towards each other, then this group on top could be spun away from the other orbital, and the same thing would go over here because you want differing directions. You might consider one clockwise and one counterclockwise. Well, the result is that they're going to go towards the same side of the molecule. So we can go ahead and put them both on wedges or dashes. And here, it really doesn't matter. And you won't have a, an antimer here because this would be a meso compound. The key to understanding how these reactions play out is to realize the rotation. In this case, we're having a disrotary rotation to get the orbitals to overlap. Of course, this changes as you add more or have less double bonds in a molecule, and it also changes whether you're working with heat, as we did here, or working with photochemical reactions. So we'll look at one more example to try to set everything straight. We can apply the same idea to opening up rings that have been created by electrocyclic reactions. Our main question is going to be, as we saw before, whether the reaction occurs with a disrotary rotation or a conrotary rotation. First, we'll want to figure out what the precursor to this molecule right here was, in order to find out how many pi electrons you're working with. Considering that there are four carbons in this ring, we know we're going to have a diene that looks like this, or a conjugated pi system that looks like this. And if we consider the highest occupied molecular orbital of this, we're going to see something that looks like this. So you should begin to see, based on what we saw last time, is that this will have to occur through a conrotary rotation. 
It doesn't matter if you're opening the ring or closing the ring, it's going to happen through a conrotary orientation in this case based on the molecular orbitals. So I'm going to take our starting material and move it around three-dimensionally so we can get a better idea of what our product's going to look like. Here we have the ring, and I'm trying to draw it so that it looks like it's coming out towards you. I'll make that a little darker. And we have this ethyl group going up and this ethyl group going up right here. We know that the bond we created to form the ring is right here, so we're going to break it from there. So if we're doing a conrotary orientation, we're going to have them both move in the same direction, and we could say counterclockwise in this case. So this substituent is going to move down this way as it becomes flat, since we're going to have sp2 hybridized carbons. And this substituent is going to move down the same way to become flat in that orientation. And what will happen is if I redraw it in the same way, then we can see what our product is going to look like. If we look at the substituent on the left, it moved away from the ring in a way, which means it would be out. You can just follow the lines that we drew earlier. And the one on the right moved inward towards the ring in the same direction, on rotary. So what do you get that? Which happens to be the product we're looking for. And I'll go ahead and draw it more in the orientation of our starting material. So I have the double bonds and the substituents. And we're done. So you can see that the key to understanding these reactions is the answering the question which way does the rotation work for the orbitals? Disrotary or conrotary? And if you can memorize at least one, you can really jump across the concepts. And if we consider a table, we could write two double bonds, three double bonds, and then the conditions of the reaction, whether it be heat or light. And we know that from the first example we did with the three double bonds or six pi electrons, we had disrotary rotation. And then anytime you switch a condition or switch the amount of double bonds, it just switches. So as we saw on the previous slide, with two double bonds or four pi electrons, we had conrotary. Well, if we switch the conditions for that, we would get disrotary. Same thing below, if we switch the conditions from that, for the three double bonds, you would get conrotary. And you can go and you know, switch between these. As long as you understand how the rotation is working, you should be able to figure out the problem.